हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू बीट ऑक्सीजन अकेडमी माई सेल्फ तरा शर्मा टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग विच इज़ ट्रेडिशनल वाटरफॉल मॉडल दैट डिस्क्राइब्स दी सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस द टॉपिक इज वेरी मच हेल्पफुल फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर एंड आई टी स्ट्रीम सो लेट स्टार्ट सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एक्चुअल सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस we need to understand what software and software engineering is so firstly if i talk about software it's a collection of multiple programs which help us to complete the particular task there are two types of softwares available one is system software and the other is application software so system softwares are kind of software which controls the system and integrates with the hardware components for example operating system so here operating system can manage the software is running over it as well as it can collaborate with the hardware components and it can manage all the background processes the other type is application software application softwares are kind of softwares which are used to complete some specific task defined by the user for example microsoft word excel powerpoint etc so i guess the concept of software is very much clear now uh, now secondly moving towards the concept of software engineering so software engineering basically define uh, how we can develop a particular software means what kind of processes involved in uh, developing the software how the processes are going to be implemented means it defines the methods to build up a software and it also defines the tools means hardware software which are required to develop the software so software engineering provides a complete environment to develop the software and there are certain models defined which uh, makes the software development process very easier so basically this models provide an efficient way or we can say it provides guidelines to develop the software in a proper manner without using this life cycle models a development of software product would be uh, not in a systematic manner or in a disciplined manner it provides improvements and guarantee of quality product uh, by using this models we can plan the things for example we can decide in the advance what uh, time or cost will be required to develop the software what size of the software could be we can decide the number of people required to develop the software so along with the planning we can monitor the things as well if the things are not going according to plan we can control it so there are many software development models listed here traditional waterfall model iterative waterfall model incremental model prototype model red model and spiral model among these models i am going to explain traditional waterfall model we can see the number of steps in the diagram i'll explain each in detail the first phase is feasibility study feasibility means possibility to develop a particular software so main goal of this phase is to decide whether the system would be technically or financially possible to develop or not so for that we need to analyze the problem definition and collect the relevant information so uh, there are some issues are concerned with feasibility among which first is technical feasibility so in which we check whether the software is technically possible to develop or not so for that we check the availability of hardware and software components needed to develop that particular software the other thing which is needed to focus is cost we check whether the software is economically possible to develop or not so after being sure about developing a software the first task is to collect the requirements of software you can see the second phase which is requirement analysis and specification which is categorized in three activities requirement gathering requirement analysis and requirement specification requirement gathering in which we need to collect the requirements after communicating with the customer although uh, the requirements can be gathered in a multiple ways uh, for example by communicating with the customer or by studying the existing software or existing documents or by analyzing the scenario so it is possible that requirements might be repeated or incomplete so the second activity which is requirement analysis in which the ambiguity or we can say repetitions or incompleteness can be removed and requirements can be converted into understandable form 
after that all these requirements are need to be documented which is the third activity requirement specification the documents that contains all the requirements is called software requirement specification SRS now moving towards the third phase which is design phase now we know the human nature which grasp the uh, things presented in pictorial forms rather than in theoretical so to understand the needs of customer very clearly all the requirements mentioned in SRS are converted into design phase this design is then converted into coding here coding is done module wise after completing the coding of each module all the modules are tested individually which is called unit testing after that modules are combined or integrated one by one incrementally and that partially developed system is tested every time after all the modules are integrated the whole system is tested which is called system testing by which we check that the whole system is properly working or not if there are any changes required or we find errors or mistakes that is to be fixed which comes in a maintenance phase or if we have successfully developed the software and delivered it to customer after some years or after some time if customer wants to add some features or wants to make some updations in the software then that is also considered to be a part of maintenance phase so from the feasibility study to integration and system testing the phases are called development phases so here traditional waterfall model describes the whole process to develop a software if we use this number of steps to develop the software it will be very easy and very convenient to develop the software as well as we can uh, develop the quality product we can deliver it in a time we can manage the cost and many more things now if i talk about the advantages of using this model and then first of all it's very simple and easy to understand and use each phase has well defined inputs and outputs it divides complex tasks into smaller and more manageable works there are some disadvantages also of using this model because it's a theoretical model but all the other models are derived from it it is very much difficult to follow all the phases in all the types of software however engineers do commit large number of errors in almost every phase of life cycle so it may happen that the errors generated in one phase can be encountered in next phase so it's not possible to go back and solve the error according to this model so basically this model is used for smaller software products where requirements are well defined products definition is stable and technology is understood thank you so much friends for watching the video if you like the video please click on the like button and you can share the video if you have not subscribed our channel bit oxygen yet then please click on subscribe button given below on the screen so that you can get notified about more videos or you can follow us on instagram our instagram id is bit oxygen underscore academy thank you